in conservative circles nowadays, it's common to hear people say, I won't apologize for being white. I never owned slaves. Or, I won't apologize for being American. Or, I won't apologize for being a Christian. Where do they get that from? Hey, if you're white, has anybody ever asked you to apologize for it? Or for your religion or nationality? Or for slavery? Of course not. Why would they? You can't change history. What would an apology even accomplish? But if you follow conservative groups online, you would think that's what the people in the streets were demanding. They're not. You should listen to them. In my experience with conservatives, they tend to believe what they read on the internet pretty quickly if it fits with their assumptions about how the world is and, and how it works. And often I'll see something that I know is a hoax or a lie, but conservatives will repost it. The far right fascists are always making fake Antifa Twitter accounts and posters to put up around cities. And if you don't know anything about Antifa, you might fall for them. Conservatives don't question these things, so fascists know they can feed conservatives memes and fake documents and tweets that will create a boogeyman in their heads. Conservatives heard Antifa were going to invade the suburbs and commit genocide on white people, so they arm up and stand in front of their houses with guns. Because they read it somewhere, and they don't know how to question what they read on this topic. They read that Antifa is an organization, which it isn't. They read that it's funded by George Soros, which to me doesn't make any sense, because, again, it's not an organization. It has no structure, certainly no accounting department. And as a movement, it doesn't particularly even need money. In fact, most of what anti-fascists do is peaceful work in the community. This information is widely available online, if, if you actually want to Google it and find out. And no, Antifa don't call everyone fascists as an excuse to attack them. The only time they're violent is when actual fascists are threatening the lives of the many groups of people they want dead. No real anti-fascists think that all white people or anyone who disagrees with them are fascists. So for your own sake, please learn about anti-fascism before you repost whatever hoax you found in your newsfeed. That said, there are credible threats made regularly against black people, Muslims, gays, trans people, leftists, feminists. Do you care about those death threats? Or only imaginary ones? Those people get murdered all the time by bigots. Do your conservative news sites tell you about that? Do you care about all the people fascists have killed? Or are you only afraid Antifa's current kill count of zero is just about to skyrocket any day now? The Antifa scare is really just one example of the many boogeymen conservatives have come to believe in. I haven't heard this for a while, but I remember not long ago I would hear about the gay agenda. Conservatives repeated this phrase over and over to convince themselves, you see. And gays were like, we have an agenda? The only thing they really ever wanted was to be respected and have their sexuality recognized like everyone else's, not shamed and covered up. But they didn't want to recognize gays as real people, so they didn't listen. So they made up the gay agenda. Conservatives to this day have a problem with LGBT people, presumably because they want everyone to conform to their simplistic ideals. 
See, the thing about conservatives and the right is they have very narrow standards for what's acceptable. And they're really intolerant of people who fall outside those standards, even if they were born that way. Some of them share memes that say, the left, this spooky entity that they can't define, is coming to turn your kids gay and confuse them about their gender and their sexuality and so on. Again, no one wants to do that. We want a world where people of all genders and sexual preferences can be considered equally valid members of the community. Is that really so much to ask? Well, sorry. Maybe not any sexual preference, since pedophilia is, of course, not valid. It's easy to make that distinction, because it's a question of consent. Since conservatives think LGBTQ people are okay, you know, some of them think that LGBTQ people are okay with pedophilia, because, again, fascists and some pedophiles have tried to insert pedophilia into valid sexualities. And of course, LGBTQ people have staunchly opposed it. By the way, no one is saying you should go to jail for not using someone's pronouns, either. Jordan Peterson got famous by claiming he was being persecuted because he couldn't muster the respect necessary to use a person's pronouns. And he started telling packed auditoriums that he was being silenced. And many right-wingers took up the same line, too, that trans and non-binary people want to force you to use the right pronouns and throw you in jail if you don't. I've never heard anyone say that except conservatives. What trans people really want is to be respected as the humans they are. If you're being disrespected for something you can't change about yourself and shouldn't have to change, you're not the problem. If someone isn't harming others, just existing publicly, they deserve our respect, not fear, lies, and violence. But right now, particularly, white people are on the defensive because they're afraid of hearing that black lives might matter as much as their lives matter. No one who's saying black lives matter is saying anything other than that their lives matter, too. They're not saying, and not even implying, that your life doesn't matter, or it matters less. I don't spend much time in online conservative groups anymore, so I expect you could easily find Photoshop pictures of people with signs like, kill all white people, or some, some other bullshit. But that's not what Black Lives Matter means. The reason they started saying Black Lives Matter is because of how many white people clearly didn't give a shit when they heard the police killed yet another black person. I always thought that was pretty obvious, but a lot of conservatives call, call Black Lives Matter protesters racist or even terrorists. They're really just grasping at straws to find a reason not to listen to them. It's the same reason people jump on a statistic about a group they don't like and memorize it and bring it up in every argument as if it explained anything. Oh yeah, well, did you know those people do X percent of insert bad thing here? Mm-hmm. So, we should hate them. Anything to avoid facing an uncomfortable truth. And one of those truths is called white privilege. Like all online subcultures, conservative circles have their assumptions. Trans people are wrong about their genders, black people are wrong about racism, white privilege doesn't exist. I think they really, they, they just don't really know what the term means. No one is saying being white means you don't have problems, or your life is better in every way than that of all people of color. That would be absurd. Nobody is so simple-minded as to say that, okay? Nobody would look at a white guy working at McDonald's and compare his life to Will Smith's life and say, well, your life is obviously better because you're white. 
what having privilege means is even Will Smith, even now, has to put up with shit just because he's black that a white person doesn't. That's it. That's all it means. And when you go from that definition, it's actually pretty obvious us white people do have a lot of privilege. I mean, do you really think, say, people of color have more money on average than white people? No. Or are more likely to get a job than a white person? Or a bank loan? Or a taxi? Who's more likely to get attacked in the street for their skin color? Who gets treated worse by police, judges, or prison guards? And what's the most damaging stereotype I have to put up with as a white person? That I like mayonnaise? I can live with that. Now again, no one's blaming you for being lucky. I really want to underline this point. You don't have to feel uncomfortable talking about whiteness. Being white doesn't make you better or worse. It just means you have privilege. It doesn't mean you have to apologize for history. But you should probably know it. Certainly if you feel the urge to try to downplay racism. Now that you know what privilege is, it's easier to see, right? Like, I don't get cops eyeing me suspiciously every day. I don't get asked if I have drugs every day. I don't get people asking to touch my hair. Although, in my case, that might be a bad example. But, either way, those are just a couple of examples of white privilege. For a different example, just to explain privilege, I'm a man, so I never get catcalled for how I look or what I'm wearing or told to smile in the street by strangers. Well, that's male privilege. I can admit I have those privileges. No one hates me for having them. But I think I should use that privilege to make society better. That's partly what this is. And hey, you do what you want. But at least don't deny being white might give you some advantages. No one's trying to take your religion away from you either. With all the statues coming down, conservatives have started saying, they're going to take Jesus away from you next. Except I haven't seen any evidence of that. They're employing what's called the slippery slope fallacy, which is a great way to scare people. You say what's happening, and then you shout, When will it end? And give a bunch of scary-sounding scenarios. But they're not ta tearing down statues of Jesus or burning down churches. In fact, the only people who burn down houses of worship in the U.S. are racists burning black churches and mosques. Felling statues is not rewriting or covering up history. If you get your understanding of history from statues, it's probably pretty limited. Statues are about glorifying people and their deeds. If breakaway slave states are something you want to glorify, you are stuck in the 1850s and should join us here in the 21st century. If you think secession was about something other than slavery, you're the one trying to rewrite history. In fact, building statues on land stolen from the indigenous people of that land is the ultimate rewrite of history. You can still learn about history even with no statues up anywhere. What about books and museums? You can learn much more there than from a few words on a statue. You might even learn about how history textbooks have been written to glorify uh, the Confederacy or just nationalism itself, to downplay slavery and pretend it doesn't have any relevance today. I recommend James Lowen on this 
on that subject, and you can find links uh, in the description. You could read about Jim Crow and how shitty things have been for black people since slavery. Plus, you could read about the new Jim Crow and the war on drugs and how the political system continues to destroy millions of black people's lives. Michelle Alexander wrote a, topic, uh, wrote a book on that topic. Then you would understand current events a lot better. Unless you're actively hating on people for their race or their gender, their sexuality, you should be fine. If you want an opinion on something, educate yourself first, a lot, and then it gets easier to sort the lies from the fiction, or the lies from the truth, I should say. Listen to the people in the streets before you condemn them for black-on-black -black crime or whatever your boogeyman is. What do you lose from hearing a different language? if they aren't talking to you, or seeing people from different countries. How does that even affect you at all? What's wrong with changing textbooks to depict history more accurately? What do you lose by getting rid of statues or confederate flags? If, the, if, if that's really what your country is, a bunch of symbols of a racist past, why do you feel the need to hold on to it? Why is your identity tied up with racism? And if it isn't, like everyone claims, you have nothing to lose. If the fight against white supremacy makes you scared you'll lose your country, what does that say about your country? Either way, if you choose to start listening, you'll understand why people are in the streets, and why they're so angry, and why they're demanding change. But in that right-wing echo chamber, you're not going to learn a thing.